we're going to go ahead and get started with our webinar, um, Continuous Delivery of Stateful Applications with Kubernetes in Production. Um, we're proud to welcome our stateful application expert and the original Kubernetes uh, product manager, Eric Hahn from Portworks. And we have CodeFresh's very own full stack engineer, Kubernaut, and our vice president of marketing, Dan Garfield. So I'm Dan Garfield. Um, as Taryn said, and thank you for that wonderful introduction, uh, I work for CodeFresh. I'm sort of our chief evangelist, and um, CodeFresh has been around for a couple of years, and we've built over three and a half million images and are kind of all over the place with customers from, you know, Arm, the, the huge chip designer, uh, Giphy, serving serving the most important GIFs on the internet. So we have kind of this uh, eclectic, interesting customer base but they're all sort of joined together by the, the common theme of they're using Kubernetes, they're using containers, and that's really our, uh, our whole focus. And preparing this was a lot of fun because I had Eric with me. And so Eric, um, I wanna introduce you and let you maybe say a few words about yourself, but Eric uh, was the original Kubernetes product manager and just incredibly sharp. And coming into this, I was new to Stateful and had been at, you know, uh, spoken at lots of different meetups and, and events and things. And people always asked me about stateful services. And I always kind of had to punt because uh, I didn't have really great answers. And so in working with uh, Eric, I was able to get a lot more information and actually learn a ton from you. So I really appreciate it. And it's been a lot of fun preparing this. I think we have a really cool demo and I'm really excited to share this. But anyway, Eric, um, let me go ahead and introduce yourself. Well, uh, first of all, thank you, Taryn and, and Dan. It's, it, it has been fun, and you presented at Portworks uh, sometime in the fall last year, and we've known CodeFresh for quite some time, going back to several KubeCons as well as DockerCons. So it's been great to watch CodeFresh and work together and now get to the point where we can show something unified between Portworks and CodeFresh. So I think there's a lot more going forward. And so uh, I love the demos you've given. I've talked to everyone about your Mario demo. <laughs> and, and I've been envious and I, I got to figure out how you did it. So thank you. Uh, and yeah, I think from our perspective at Portworks, we're here really in the sense that we see everyone wanting to be able to move to this containerized portion. And a lot of the value comes when you can do it with the stateful application. So uh, happy to be here, spend some time talking about what people are doing in the ecosystem, how it matters, how it impacts them. And then just a little bit about how Portworks addresses that problem set. And then end with something that's really cool between Portworks and CodeFresh. Yeah, thank you. And with that, um, I also will mention that some of the underlying technology we're using here uh, that's really interesting and cool. We, we decided to use uh, GKE, Google Cloud, for all of uh, right, right. all the clusters here. Um, really lovely to work with, uh, just a joy. So anyway, that's, the, you, and we'll see that uh, later on. But um, today what we're gonna cover is basically an intro to stateful applications. We'll talk a little bit about best practices and how to approach, uh, approach and work with stateful applications, both in production and staging, um, how it works inside of Kubernetes. And then we'll talk about uh, sort of functional testing with data and continuous delivering with data uh, and how that sort of works. And then we'll have some demos and we'll do some Q&A. So with that said, I think Taryn uh, introduced everybody to the Q&A button. Feel free to ask questions there. Uh, you're welcome to use the chat, though if you use the chat, lots of times um, I won't see the questions at the end and, and can't mark them as answered. So uh, if you use the Q&A, um, you're, you have a better chance of having your questions answered. This is being recorded. We will have a, uh, a copy of this available afterwards, uh, as well as the slides. So you'll be able to review it and share it with your team. But obviously, if you want to run them into the room, and uh, that's, that's my preference. <laughs> so with that, uh, Eric, why don't you take okay. it away? My pleasure. So I think one thing I'll start with is a lot of people ask, you know, when does stateful and how does when does stateful matter and what's the evolution? And I think one key thing is, and, and this is some of our conversation, Dan, is that I think every application has state. The only stateless application that I've seen, and credit goes to Robert from Cumulus for this comment, but the only stateless application out there is really Hello World. So if I look at the stacks, there is a separation between stateful and stateless stacks. So in some ways, this is a simplified uh, breakdown. But when I look at it, the important thing that, or what strikes me is that customers are already starting to do this or users are already starting to do it. And it's important because the apps that they're building, they have to be interactive, they have to be real time, 
or they have to service some business need where they can't predict what the stack is going to be. So it's going to be that the developers want to use Couchbase or Cassandra, and they're going to pick it off and they want off the shelf components. They want to download it from a registry and be able to run. And suddenly infrastructure people, the users that run Portworx are saying like, how do I manage? How do I protect the data? And that's where we come in. But if I talk about what stateful and stateless means, I'll just use a simplified filter to say like on the stateless side, there are things like Nginx, Ubuntu, Debian, and they may be traditionally thought of as, hey, a replication controller or some form of HA can just spin it up and it's okay if data's not there anymore. Mm -hmm. And so that's an uh, oversimplification, but it starts to separate the world into that. There are the stateful side where it does matter that I have the data intact and we'll talk about the underlying elements like PVCs and persistent volumes and how those all matter in a scale out cluster. But the simple thing is, am I building applications or is my team wanting to build applications and they're running MySQL Postgres and things like GitLab's run over Postgres. Uh, and then if I look at CodeFresh, your pipeline has state and every user has to be protected in terms of their state. Mm -hmm. So people are wanting to do Elasticsearch clusters and they start to build search analytics. So all these things matter because the business needs them. And now what do I do? And we'll talk a little bit about just the generic pitfalls. We'll make it across all the industry, but let me just start and back up a little bit before state. And this is actually more from my personal experience. Before I worked at Google, there was a time where I was actually uh, the Zune web services product manager. And uh, I don't think- I had a Zune, by the way. You, you had a Zune. Oh my gosh, it was sweet. I love that thing. There's more Zunes in my house than there are people <laughs> in my house. Uh, my kids each have two Zunes. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I'm an even bigger fan, Dan. Uh, <laughs> the thing, and Zoom's come back in vogue because of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy at the end where oh, you know, right. yeah, the, the hero gets a Zoom. Yeah. But if I look at Zoom and how we were building, you know, there was a different, it was a different era. You know, we're talking nine, 10 years ago. And the funny thing is like, you know, my, we, Zoom happened when my first child was born. I remember my wife is like, uh, our baby was a week old. I was going back into the office because we were going to do a deployment. And we're basically going to launch the second version of Zoom Web Services. And at the time, the way our app looked was really that it had every application owned its own server. And you can say Cassandra does it today, or Cassandra likes to do it today, or Mongo. And that's true. But back in 10 years ago, it would look like this. You'd have a web server. You'd have a couple sites on it, and then have a business tier, a middle logic, uh, logic layer, and then connect into that at that time SQL server. But these things were very manual in terms of, yeah, we had uh, build systems, but the process and the decision making was completely manual, unlike what we have today with CodeFresh. And the density that people want were very minimal. They wanted one application to that server. And what that really led to, in some ways, is the idea that, you know, we're the world's different now. I have containers. I have build systems like CodeFresh, and I also want to be able to create a lot denser uh, set of applications and have variety. But the reason I need to is because going back to that Zoom experience, we were really rigid and our scalability was very poor and it led to very high costs per application. If I thought about the amount of manual time and the amount of resources I was spending, it was extremely expensive. And so the upshot of that story is my daughter was a week old, my oldest child. I told my wife, I'm going to go in the office. We're going to deploy. It's going to be a couple hours. It ended up being a five-day deployment. And so, uh, you know, I wasn't earning any points back home, especially with the uh, firstborn. But the idea here is that we didn't have this continuous process of how to monitor, manage, and the world's a lot better now. And so, you know, why, what does the world look like today? Forget, you know, my little story. But the world looks like, if I talk to my customers, what they're trying to do is they're trying to build clusters. It, it looks, it could look like a pipeline. This is a a simplified pipeline. And the reason they're doing it is because they have things like Kafka that can handle large amount of processing and they're using Cassandra for caching and they could throw in Spark or other things. But the idea is that they're gonna be, it's gonna be dynamic. It's gonna be dynamic because the users and the use cases, it's not one site that gets the whole hardware. It's many users saying, I wanna come in at this point. These are uh, sites doing flash sales. These are sites doing just internal IT hosting and the developers also want to change the mix. So the demand is changing, the mix of applications is changing, and it's no longer I want to go procure a server to then deploy this app. Instead, it's I want to procure a container. And how quickly can I procure a container and offer it to my developers and then offer that hosting to my developers and offer that to the business? That's the name of the game, and that gives me some agility here in, in, in the competitive ecosystem. So people are creating 20 containers per server, and some are doing 40, and some are doing 90. And what that means is that I can suddenly have a lot more agility, a lot more density. And so no longer am I in this world where it's 
manual. It's much more automated from both deployment, and that's why we have Kubernetes. It's automated from a pipeline perspective. That's why CodeFresh is super important. And what it leads to is lower costs per application in the whole entire process. And it also requires faster delivery, faster, mm -hmm. you know, faster delivery requires continuous integration and testing. So the whole thing is this all fits together, right? I don't want to be in the world 10 years ago where I can't tell if I'm going to come on that night because production is something that is very manual. Every application gets its own server. Instead, I'm now at a point where I require automation. I want the whole pipeline to help me make higher level decisions. And the things like managing bin packing or managing how many containers per server Kubernetes will help me. And I need storage systems that handle the data. And that's, that's where we come in.